It's incredibly stupid for our country to be sh so short-sighted to try to make our political statements by denying the men and women of the Guard and Reserve Gentleman's the pay for their sacrifices. I urge support of the resolution. Gentleman's I yield back. time has expired. The gentleman from Indiana is recognized. My time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Um, Madam Speaker, I yield one minute at this time to Mr. Kaufman, the gentleman from Colorado. The gentleman from Colorado is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I rise uh, in support of H.R. Uh, 30, the Pay Our Guard and Reserve Act. On um, September 30th, uh, Congress uh, passed and the President signed uh, H.R. 32, uh, 3210, the, uh, uh, I believe it's the Pay Our Troops Act uh, that I introduced. Every member of the House voted for that bill. Every member voted for that bill. Yet there are those here today that seem to have sort of a temporary amnesia about that. And it's like, we're, gonna, we're not going to vote for anything piecemeal. We will only vote when there's a clean CR for everything for everybody, for all aspects of the federal government, the discretionary budget. Yet, you already voted piecemeal. You voted for active duty personnel. You voted for federal civil service. You voted for the contractors essential for them. You already did that. Gentleman's the time message has expired. that you're sending is that the soldiers, the Marines, the airmen, the reserves, the guardsmen that have sacrificed their lives for this country for what purpose are of lesser does the gentleman status from Indiana than the active duty. And you're wrong. The gentleman's time wrong. has expired. The gentleman from Indiana. I uh, will be recognized, but I would like to remind the members to uh, address their statements to the chair. Gentleman from Indiana. I would simply make the point in response to the gentleman's remarks that I don't want to vote on a clean CR. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to vote on 12 appropriation bills that make discrete decisions that make discerning judgments about how best and most efficiently and most effectively to run the government of the United States. The gentleman is mistaken if he thinks I want to vote on a clean CR. I want to do appropriation bills just as I know Chairman Rogers wants to do and as Ranking Member Lowy wants to do, and I would reserve my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Madam Speaker, I agree uh, that the regular order is to pass individual appropriations bills and go to conference with the Senate, if they will, conference. So I agree with my friend from Indiana on that issue. And at this, at this time, I would yield one minute to my colleague and my friend from Florida, uh, Mr. Bilirakis. The gentleman from Florida is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise today to show my support for continued funding for our veterans and military personnel and the reserve components. As Vice Chairman of the House Veterans Affairs Committee, I always find myself in awe of the sacrifices our men and women in uniform have made in service to our great country. I remain committed to ending this government shutdown and fighting to protect the American people. I have joined my House colleagues to vote multiple times to keep the government open and to make sure that members of Congress face the same consequences under Obamacare that hardworking Americans across the country face. It is my desire, my sincere hope, that the Senate and the President will come together as soon as possible to join the House in a civil and open dialogue. We need to enact a fair solution to this situation that serves all Americans, particularly our nation's heroes who have so bravely served us. Thank you, and I yield back. The gentleman yields. The gentleman from Indiana I reserve my time. will continue to reserve. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. He reserves. You can yield Michigan. Madam Speaker, at this point, I yield one minute to the gentlelady from Michigan, Mrs. Miller. The gentlelady is recognized for one minute. 
Madam Speaker, I rise today in strong support of this legislation, the Pay Our Garden Reserve Act. The first and foremost responsibility of the federal government is to provide for the common defense. That is actually in the preamble of our Constitution. And since our nation's birth some 237 years ago, the National Guard has been at the foundation of our common defense. Since 9-11, Madam Speaker, we've seen the largest call-up of active service of our National Guard and Reserve since World War II. They actually make up about 30 percent of everybody who's in theater. The men and women of the Guard and Reserve have always answered freedom's call with bravery and with honor. And the enemy and their bullets make no distinction between the regular armed forces and the Guard and Reserve. So it is beyond me to understand why this Congress would do so. We have a duty to make certain that those brave men and women have the training that they need to serve in defense of our freedoms and to make certain that they are paid for their service. Vote yes for the National Guard and Reserve. Vote yes on this legislation. I yield back. He yields back. The gentleman from Indiana. I reserve my time. Continues to reserve. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Oklahoma. Madam Speaker, I yield one minute to the gentleman from Oklahoma, Mr. Bridenstine. The gentleman from Oklahoma is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in support of H.R. 3230 our for our National Guard and Reserve. I would be astonished if any member of Congress votes against this bill. In the midst of a shutdown due to, pres due to the President and Harry Reid's unwillingness to negotiate, Congress came together and we acted to fund our active duty troops. Following this vote, the radical left voted against funding our veterans. They voted against funding our national parks, and they even voted against funding ca cancer patients. Now we are trying to pay the reserve and guard components that have fought valiantly for this country all over the world. The citizen warriors of my state of Oklahoma and across this country should not suffer because the radical left, including our president, is unwilling to negotiate. Voting against our Guard and Reserve service members is every bit as indefensible as voting against our active duty service members and our vets. I urge my colleagues to act responsibly and to fund our Reserve and Guard. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Indiana is recognized. I would yield three minutes to the ranking member of the Appropriations Committee, Ms. Lowy. The gentlelady from New York is recognized for three minutes. Mr. Speaker, I rise with great respect for Chairman Young. However, I rise in strong opposition to this reckless Republican shutdown. Of course we support the National Guard and Reserves. The House already passed a full year funding bill for the Guard and Reserves in July. Under the auspices of Chairman Young and our extraordinary ranking member, ranking member Viskloski. But this bill is inadequate, and it's the wrong action at this time. Our troops need training and equipment, two key components absent from this bill. This be measure does nothing to help the CIA, the FBI, the DEA, the Secret Service, Immigration, Custom Enforcement, this is critical to our nation's defense. We could end the shutdown today if the majority would only allow a vote on the Senate passed bill, which includes the funding levels that the Republicans support and would be signed by the President. And then we can get to work, as our ranking member said, on a complete bill, an omnibus bill, through the regular order of the Appropriations Committee. The H House majority apparently can't take the heat from the fire that they lit. So now they put forward this reckless political attempt to shift blame for their shutdown. Ending the shutdown of our government couldn't be more simple. Stop playing games. Pass the reasonable bill the Senate and the White House have already agreed to. Mr. Speaker, it's time for the Republicans to stop opposing reasonable solutions and end their shutdown. 
allow a vote on the Senate bill. I've served in this Congress for many years with the distinguished ranking member, Mr. Fisklowski, and the chairman, Mr. Bill Young. I'm embarrassed to go home to my constituents in my district and talk to them about the dysfunction due to the Republican shutdown of this government. There are people who don't have child care. There are people who don't have health care. There are people who are suffering, having trouble paying the rent. The gentlelady's time has expired. Let us open this government and get our work done. The gentleman from Indiana is recognized. Understanding that Chairman Young will close and has no further speakers, uh, I would simply make the observation that I would hope uh, all of us uh, think through the issues that are pending here today and tomorrow and remember that our ultimate charge is to be of service to all of the public and I yield back my time. The gentleman from Indiana yields back the balance of his time. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, I yield myself the balance of the time on our side. The gentleman is recognized. This is not a political bill. This is a, a correction bill. And it, it has been held pretty much to a legislative process rather than a political process. And I want to say how much I have enjoyed the many years of serving on the same subcommittees uh, with Mrs. Lowy. And then she ad advanced to the high rank as, as the ranking member on the Appropriations Committee. And my friend, Mr. Visklosky, we have worked together for so long uh, on the Defense Appropriations Committee to bring to this House and to this Congress legislation that had no sign of politics. H.R. 3230, I believe, will be supported by everybody in the House. It doesn't solve the overall problem, but it does solve one problem for the Guard and Reserve. Uh, I'm satisfied that there will be other legislation following uh, not maybe this particular bill, but following in the, in the course of events that will come later. But today, we're dealing with H.R. 3230. And I hope that everybody in the room, in the chamber, in the, in the House, will support H.R. 3230 and at least take care of one of the problems. Uh, with that very important thought, uh, I yield back my time. The gentleman from Florida yields back the balance of, uh, of his time. Madam Speaker. All time for debate has expired. Pursuant to House Resolution 370, the previous question is ordered on the bill. The question is on engrossment and third reading of the bill. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The, the ayes have it. Third reading. A bill making continuing appropriations during a government shutdown to provide pay and allowances to members of the reserve components of the armed forces who perform inactive duty training during such period. For what I, purpose does the gentleman from Illinois seek recognition? I have a motion to recommit at the desk. Is the gentleman opposed to the bill? I am in its current form. The uh, gentleman qualifies. The clerk will report the motion. Mr. Inyard of Illinois moves to recommit the bill. Madam Speaker. For what purpose does the gentleman from Florida seek recognition? Uh, I, Madam Speaker, I reserve a point of order on the gentleman's motion. The point of order is reserved. The clerk will continue to read. Mr. Inyard of Illinois moves to recommit the bill, H.R. 3230, to the Committee on Appropriations with instructions to report the same back to the House forthwith with the following amendment. Strike all after the enacting clause and insert the following. 
that upon passage of this bill by the House of Representatives, the joint resolution, House Joint Resolution 59, making continuing appropriations for fiscal year 2014 and for other purposes, as amended by the Senate Amendment on September 27, 2013, shall be considered as to have been taken from the Speaker's table, and the House shall be considered to have, one, receded from its amendment, and two, concurred in the Senate Amendment. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Illinois is recognized for five minutes in support of his motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the underlying bill pays reservists and guardsmen for weekend drills during this government shutdown, but it does nothing to pay the full-time support force. The vast majority of full-time guardsmen and reservists wear a uniform, but are considered civil service technicians. Thus, they're currently furloughed. I spent nearly 36 years serving this great nation's military, 32 of those years in the in the National Guard and in the Reserve. As a young enlisted airman, later as a junior officer in the Army Guard, I certainly appreciated that paycheck for a weekend of duty. I, like many of the young troops serving today, needed that paycheck. Kind of like the civilian employees at Scott Air Force Base need their paychecks, or the Forest Service workers in the Shawnee National Forest need their paychecks, or the clerks at the Social Security Office in Carbondale, Illinois, need their paychecks. The absolute, utter cynicism of the underlying bill appalls me. As the only former general serving in Congress, I'm sponsoring this amendment to correct the underlying bill, which only makes pawns of dedicated American reservists and guardsmen. The only thing that bill does is give the politicians who sponsored it and who vote for it a claim while they wrap themselves in the flag to say they're supporting the troops. It's as phony as putting a flag pin on your lapel and claiming that makes you a patriot. The underlying bill is as phony as the bill I voted against Tuesday. That bill was falsely named Honoring Our Promise to Americans Veterans Act. You know, my father was a disabled veteran. He's buried in a national cemetery. My brother is a combat disabled veteran. I'm a veteran. Between the three of us, we have accumulated a total of 65 years of military service to this nation. I tell you, as a veteran, that bill is a disservice to veterans. It cut $6.1 billion from the VA budget, which was already passed by the House. It eliminated funding for VA construction. It eliminated funding for national cemeteries, that cemetery my father's buried in. It eliminated funding for medical and prosthetic research. That bill was a lie to America's veterans and America's voters. I am sick of phony bills designed solely to create political ads. I and my constituents are sick of the messaging that makes bad policy out to be good politics. It is time to drive the money changers from the temple and to bring an end to this sanctimonious foolishness. Just as a soldier refuses to leave his or her battle buddies behind, I refuse to leave all of the people who proudly serve this great nation behind. Stop this charade. Have the moral courage to tell the truth to the American people. The amendment I offer today presents the continuing resolution which has the Republican budget numbers in it. It would pay not just the part-time National Guard, not just the part-time reservists, but the full-timers too. It puts the 70% of the CIA back to work. It puts the VA back to work. It puts our government back to work. Let's not call this a continuing resolution. Let's call it what it is. Put our government back to work. I ask you to have the integrity to vote yes or no. If you are a patriot behind that American flag pin, have the guts to show it. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Florida seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I make a point of order against the motion to recommit. This motion is not germane and as such is a violation of Rule 16 
Clause 7, which states no motion or proposition on a subject different from that under consideration shall be admitted under color of amendment. This motion deals with a proposition unrelated to the matter addressed by the joint resolution and brings in a matter under the jurisdiction of the Committee on Rules, which fails the Committee of Jurisdiction test and therefore is a violation of Rule 16, Clause 7. So I ask for a ruling from the Chair. Thank you. Does the gentleman from Illinois wish to be heard on the point of order? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to speak to the point the of order. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, does not the bill before us fund a portion of the federal government? My motion to recommit would open up the entire federal government so that the National Guard, the part-time National Guard, not only receives their pay, but also the full-time National Guard. They would receive all of their benefits. They would receive funds for the equipment to do their jobs. There would no longer be furloughs. Can the chair explain why it is not germane to keep all of the needs of the National Guard open for public service instead of only their pay? If we're paying our National Guard, but they can't do their jobs, what sense does that make? Are we asking our brave soldiers simply to sit at their desks? What kind of strange house is this that would force that situation on our brave men and women, the brave men and women that have been so remarkably addressed by the gentleman across the aisle? Madam Speaker, if you rule this motion out of order, does that mean we will not have a chance to keep the entire federal government open today? Can the chair please explain why we can't keep the entire federal government, not just our part-time National Guard, but the entire federal government open today. The chair is prepared to rule. The gentleman from Florida makes a point of order that the amendment proposed in the motion to recommit offered by the gentleman from Illinois is not germane. The bill extends funding relating to the reserve components of the armed forces for all of fiscal year 2014 and a portion of fiscal year 2015. The instructions in the motion propose an order of business of the House relating to funding for all other agencies and departments subject to the annual appropriations process for the remainder of the fiscal year. On October 2, 2013, a similar motion to recommit was offered to a joint resolution that, like H.R. 3230, provided for the appropriation of certain funds. The chair ruled that motion non-germane on committee jurisdiction grounds. Here, similarly, the bill falls within the jurisdiction of the Committee on Appropriations. The instructions contained in the motion to recommit fall within the jurisdiction of the Committee on Rules. The motion is not germane. The point of order is sustained. For what purpose does the gentleman from Illinois seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I appeal the, the uh, ruling of the chair, of the speaker. The question is, shall the Madam decision... Speaker, uh, if the gentleman would yield, uh, the, if the gentleman would yield... Uh, I move to lay the appeal on the table. Uh, the question is, shall the decision of the chair stand as judgment of the House? And for what purpose does the gentleman from Florida seek recognition at this time? Uh, Madam Speaker, I move to lay the appeal on the table. The question is on the motion to lay the appeal on the table. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. No. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Madam Speaker. The gentleman from Illinois is recognized. May we, may we have yeas and nays, Madam Speaker. The yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will rise. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. Pursuant to Clause 9 of Rule 20, this 15-minute vote on the motion to table will be followed by a five-minute vote on passage of the bill if arising without further proceedings is recommittal. This is a 15-minute vote. And so while that voting takes place, we're going to use this opportunity to update you on where things stand. Day three of the government shutdown. A headline we want to share with you from the New York Times. Speaker Boehner telling House Republicans he will not let the nation default. 
We are two weeks away before we reach uh, the debt limit, October 17th, the deadline put forth by the Treasury Secretary Jack Lew. Our phone lines are open at 202-585-3885. That's our line for Republicans in 202-585-3886 for Democrats. And if you're an independent, the number to call is 202-585-3887. We'll get to your calls in just a moment. You can also share us your tweet. The hashtag is C-SPAN chat. The president earlier in the day, one public event, he traveled to Rockville, Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C., visited a construction plan and said the uh, federal government could reopen within a matter of hours if Congress is allowed to vote on a clean CR, a clean continuing resolution. Here's what the president had to say mid-morning today just outside of Washington, D.C. Could happen in the next, next half hour. National parks, monuments, offices would all reopen immediately. Benefits and services would resume again. Hundreds of thousands of dedicated public servants who are worrying about whether they're going to be able to pay the mortgage or pay the car note, they'd start going back to work right away. So my simple message today is call a vote. Call a vote. Put it on the floor and let every individual member of Congress make up their own minds. And they can show the American people, are you for a shutdown or not? If you're not for a shutdown, you'll fo vote for the bill. If you're for a shutdown, you won't vote for a bill. We don't have to twist anybody's arms. But that way, the American people will be clear about who's responsible for the shutdown. Or, alternatively, more hopefully, they'd be clear that this is something that doesn't make sense and we should go ahead and make sure that we're looking out for the American people. It should be that simple. The president in Rockville, Maryland earlier in the day and this headline from rollcall.com, merging spending and the debt debate means the shutdown likely to last two weeks. Matt Fuller is following all of this. He covers the House leadership for CQ Roll Call. He's joining us live via Skype from Capitol Hill. Thanks very much for being with us. Thanks for having me. So bring us up to date uh, at 1.30 here in Washington, D.C. What's the latest? Well, Republicans are continuing this uh, mini continuing resolution uh, strategy. They're going to pass piece by piece um, these small funding uh, bills. The, the, right now they're doing the, um, the military reserves and, and the guard. Uh, the, yesterday they had three bills. Um, the D.C. bill, which would help um, free money for the District of Columbia. Um, they had the National Parks Bill, which has obviously become this kind of tinderbox of, uh, of politics here where um, World War II uh, memorials have been closed and veterans have been shut out and Republicans are sort of rallying behind that. And, um, the, and well, also they have a bill that actually has been signed into law, which is the um, military pay, the active duty um, military personnel who are, who are actually going to be paid, not going to be paid with IOUs during this shutdown. But Republicans um, seem committed to this strategy right now. They want to force Democrats to the negotiating table. And Democrats, conversely, are saying, you know, we're not going to negotiate on, on a clean CR. We want the government to continue as it's funded right now. Um, and it, you know, it seems to be a bit of an impasse. Well, let me follow up because uh, I know you and others have been able to obtain this memo issued earlier in the day by the Republican leader, Eric Cantor. This is what it looks like to Republican colleagues on the current state of play, strategy, and goals. And in the memo, he talks about the strategy. He says, no one can predict with certainty how the current situation will be resolved, but adding that I'm confident that by going through this piecemeal approach, it will bring the Democrats and the president back to the bargaining table. How likely is that? Well, at some point, I mean, we're going to need to fund the government. Uh, it's unclear, you know, if, if, if Democrats are, are willing to um, concede on, on, on some of these issues here. One big issue that moderates say that they have some leverage on that Democrats uh, might be willing to negotiate on is the medical devices tax, which is a 2.3% uh, tax on medical devices that Democrats themselves are, are sort of iffy on. Um, it's unclear, you know, what concessions would, would, would bring this thing to a head where they, they, Republicans and Democrats could actually come together and pass something. The memo itself uh, doesn't say too much, actually. It, it's, it's more of actually a press release than, than a, an internal memo, it seems. Um, it, what it basically says is that Republicans are going to move forward with their current plan, and um, it, 
just force Democrats to the table with with these small bills, small spending bills, and try to force the blame on Democrats uh, outside of Washington that Democrats are blocking you know these popular programs like national parks and and um, reserve pay for for military personnel. They think that that's a winning political strategy and also a, a winning strategy in reality too. But Democrats are really committed to not um, conceding on that issue. Uh, their point is that you know we might be able to fund all these. Uh, popular programs, but at the end of the day, these unpopular programs like the IRS or the EPA, they aren't going to get funded, and that's just uh, unacceptable for them. Matt Fuller, it's Thursday, and I mention that because on Thursdays, typically, the Speaker of the House meets with reporters. He's not doing so today. Why? Well, I think he's, I think he's trying to avoid uh, a couple questions, a couple of very difficult questions. Uh, the one question I would like to ask him is, why won't you allow a vote on a, on a clean CR? And I think that a lot of reporters, a lot of Americans are asking that question, because um, I mean, frankly, it puts Boehner in a, in a difficult position, especially if Boehner thinks that he has to, um, if he has to eventually pass a clean CR. He doesn't want to come out too strong on one way uh, on that question. Why won't you allow a clean CR? Uh, can, and, and he also doesn't want to seem weak on that. He, he doesn't want to, you know, give up the fight on Obamacare, give up the fight on, on all these other issues that Republicans have. He's, you know, he's a voice in that in that conference. He's really speaking for the conference here. Um, it's not just his opinion. So. And, I, and it, we saw today on the Senate floor, Harry Reid said that weeks ago, um, Boehner had told him that he would he would he wants a clean CR at the current sequester level, the 986 billion levels. So um, we don't really know where Boehner's at personally, but what we do know is that the Republicans still want negotiation, they still want concessions from Democrats. So it's a very difficult spot to put Boehner, uh, putting him in front of cameras, in front of reporters. Now that tactic only lasts for you know a little while. Eventually, he will have to come forward. And answer some questions. So, in moving ahead, what happens next? We've been hearing from uh, our colleagues on the Hill that uh, the House and Senate uh, could very well be in session through the weekend. What are you hearing? What's the next step? Well, Re, uh, Senate, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid said, you know, he thought that they would be in through the weekend, and I think the optics of it suggest that we're going to be here for the weekend. Uh, you know, Americans don't want to see the representatives going home for the weekend and taking the weekend off when you know, 800,000 employees have been furloughed here, and um, it's a very real political consequences here. Are, you can feel it right now that it, that um, in the tension in the Capitol here is, is, is palpable. And at the moment, the president is still scheduled to depart for the uh, his summit in Asia on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, the, the president has his, his message that he's, you know, not going to negotiate. He's, he's resolute on, on that fact, and he's, you know, saying that it's up to Republicans to uh, pass a clean CR. Um, both both sides are sort of talking past each other at this point, um, you know, and that's the that's the real difficulty here. That's the thing that that makes this this shutdown very real and and, and could be uh, quite lengthy. Uh, obviously, um, the good side of this, and I think this, the side that the stock market is looking at, that a lot of congressional observers are looking at, is that if this does extend through a little bit, you're looking at a joint resolution with the the debt limit that. Um, which is perhaps the the bigger issue, the the more economically toxic issue. Um, if the, if this does extend for a while, then the shutdown and, and the debt limit are going to have to become one issue, and then that would give uh, President Obama some cover to uh, negotiate a little bit. As he said, he's you know he's, he said I'm not going to negotiate with Congress on paying its bills. Um, if he if he allows the debt limit and the and the um, continuing resolution to come together in one sort of the this you know. To use the term "grand bargain," um, there might be some concessions on either side, and, and, and House monitors are looking at um, sequestration as well. Uh, de you know, Democrats are looking at at um, the, the CR, the debt limit, and, and Republicans obviously still want some concessions on Obamacare, and, and one of that concessions might be the medical devices tax. Let me remind our audience that we're also monitoring what's happening at the White House. There is a live briefing going on this hour with Press Secretary Jay Carney. It's being streamed on our website at cspan.org. It's also available on C-SPAN 3. And we'll get to your calls in just a moment as we watch the House with uh, the first of two votes. But I want to go back to this headline by David Hawkins, meaning that the shutdown could last two weeks. How likely, Matt Fuller, is that? Well, it's increasingly likely. It, it, it seems that um, you know Republicans and Democrats are just talking past each other at this point. And, and if if they're going to come to a solution, that solution looks like it's going to have to involve the debt limit. And Congress doesn't like to solve issues before a deadline is really reached. They like to do it right at the last minute. So 
um, you know, the, the, the real date that we're looking at right now is October 17th, which is the, the date that Treasury Secretary Liu said that's when we're going to run out of our borrowing authority. So that's now the real date. That's the hard, fast deadline. And no one in Congress, you know, Republicans, Democrats included, seems to uh, want to exceed the debt limit. That seems to be one of these things they all agree on. They just can't get that. Let's go to Marie joining us from Winder, Georgia. She's calling on a Republican line. Matt Fuller, who's jo joining us from Capitol Hill. Go ahead, Marie. Hi there. Um, first of all, I wanted to make a comment about what the president just said mm -hmm. about um, who is responsible for the shutdown. And I feel it's not the Democrats or the Republicans. He's the president. He is responsible. And he should come to the table and meet with the Democrats and the Republicans and work this out together. And then um, second, I wanted to mention about the Democrats, when they're talking, they are talking about how um, everybody is visiting the website, you know, 5,000 people or 5 million people, but they don't mention how many people have bought the health care. Because I went on there yesterday, and I'm a, a self-employed person. I have pre-existing. You know, I do exercise and work out, and I don't go to the doctors often. But I've always had a problem with health insurance. So Kaiser was my um, health insurance for probably about six years. I paid about 450 a month, had a $2,000 deductible, and a $4,000 max limit for the year. Well, when the economy fell, I had to let my insurance go. So I've been uninsured about two years now. And I go to the doctors, I pay out of pocket, and it's cheaper for me to do that and keep up with my health care than it is to pay monthly. So I went on there yesterday on the website and visited it. And I, oh, also to mention, I have custody of my granddaughter, so now I'm a family of two um, on my income. So... I visited the website, and as a self-employed person, they allow you to go in under 2014 and estimate what you will be making. So I just wanted hypothetical. I went in there, and I just put in $10,000, family of two, and through Kaiser, you know, their calculator. Mm -hmm. And what I got was I will be paying $285 a month for a family of two, and a 6700 max out of pocket per year and a 2000 no it wasn't a 2000 deductible it was more like $3000 deductible Marie, I'm I'm going to jump in cuz we're very short on time do you want to make a quick question or a follow up and we'll get a response from Matt Fuller Okay yes um so I wanted to mention um that, you know, with that, that is not saving any money. I don't call it affordable health care. Okay, I'm going to stop at that point, Marie. Thanks for the call. And let me take her point and also what we heard from House Republicans early in the day, Matt Fuller, because they've been recounting similar stories of people who will see huge increases in their monthly payments and their deductible. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of House Republicans are, and, and, and the caller here kind of summed up uh, a frustration generally that um, a lot of people are seeing. Um, a lot of issues with, with the exchange to this point. Um, a lot of people are saying, you know, they're coming to the realization that health care is very expensive. Um, and it's frustrating. It's frustrating for constituents. It's frustrating for, for the people who represent them. Um, the thing is that Republicans, and this is part of this fight here, is that Republicans really don't like Obamacare. They really don't like the Affordable Care Act. Um, and they want to see it go. And I, and I think that, you know, they're feeling the pressure for constituents who are voicing that, you know, that, that very same argument that, you know, this is just unaffordable for them. That that it's just too much. Um, you know, and that's why they're that's why we're having this fight. Um, you know, in the past we've seen Congress able to kind of come to come to the table at this last hour and, and find a way forward. And this is the first shutdown in 17 years, and a lot of it is because Obamacare has 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 changed a lot of of the of the dynamics here. We'll go to Natasha joining us from New Jersey. She's calling in on the Democrats' line with Matt Fuller, who's joining us on Capitol Hill. Go ahead, Natasha. Uh, hello, everyone. I just wanted to call and give a statement, and you know, my I'll put on that. I've been a Democrat. Um, I have a family for. I have a disabled child. Um, health coverage is, is expensive. We all know that. I don't. Um, I don't agree with the, a mandate for everybody to get it because it is going to vary from income to income. Now, it might help the people that don't have a high income for low income, so they might be able to profit from this. But realistically, a Republican, they make more money. So they're definitely going to have a higher premium, a higher deductible. It's not fair. 
Um, as far as the mandate is concerned, they should, you know, President Obama should go to the table. He should definitely look and find out what can they do to make this better. First of all, the, the Obamacare, whatever, it just started. Everything, if you just start a website, when you start it up, it has there's things that are not right. They have to keep going and modifying it to fix it and to change it. Um, it's not a good sign for him not to be willing to go in and change. Um, it's not something that's permanent. You know, if your shoe, if you, your shoe, your foot gets swollen, you wear a size eight. You know, later on, if your foot gets swollen, you have to go and you have to get another side. You have to adjust. <laughs> um, I feel as though they're both on both sides of the, of the aisle. They're both being extremely, extremely. Like, they just can't work together. It's just sad, and I feel like the only people that are suffering is the American people. Okay, Natasha, thanks for the call from New Jersey. There's also this, Matt Fuller from David, who said in his tweet, Obamacare is just another tax till for the government to dip in. Some pretty strong passion out there. Well, absolutely, some strong, strong passion, and, you know, that's why Republicans are fighting for this. They, you know, they're hearing from their constituents back home, and really this was a fight that, you know, it's an open secret that leadership wasn't really on board with the strategy of defunding Obamacare through the continuing resolution. They thought that that really was risking a government shutdown. But what you had, uh, the, the real the, the game changer here was the August recess where Republicans went home back to their districts and they heard from their, their constituent, constituent after constituent said, you know, I, I, I don't like this, I, I want you to fight and I want you there for me. And that's what's sort of changed this now. And, and, and uh, Republicans have this feeling, it seems, that if they give up on 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 the, the the continuing resolution, if they you know reopen government here, and I'm not saying that it's just the Republicans who who, who hold the keys here, but um, if they do assent to a clean CR, uh, they're giving up on on the fight on, on Obamacare, and and you know that's the that's the thing that these Republicans are are really um, fighting for is that they they hear their constituents, they hear these complaints, and they and they just feel like they have a, a winning argument on that point. We want to remind our listeners uh, joining us on C-SPAN Radio, which, by the way, is heard nationwide on XM Channel 119, that the House is undergoing a series of procedural votes at this hour. We're talking with Matt Fuller, who is joining us via Skype on Capitol Hill. And Matt Fuller, let me ask you about the meeting that took place last night with the congressional leadership led by the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, and the President. We saw the public statement by the Speaker and the congressional Democrats after the meeting. What happened inside the White House? What have you been able to, uh, to gather? Well, it's sort of unclear what actually happened uh, in the White House. Now, that was a meeting that was over an hour, um, and you know, Speaker John Boehner came out and said, you know, the president just reiterated his position that he would not negotiate on this. That seems like a quick message for an hour. So I have a feeling that they were talking about more than just I won't negotiate on this. I think that the the real thing that they're talking about, and it seems like the, within private meetings that you're hearing uh, the news kind of trickling out, is that they're talking about this this grand bargain that they're talking about. Um, fixing the debt, the debt limit with the continuing resolution and, and addressing sequestration and maybe parts of Obamacare. And, and I think Boehner and, and, and um, Minority Leader Pelosi and, and uh, Harry Reid and Mitch McConnell, uh, I think they, they're all at that table there and they're, they're realizing that these things all need to kind of be wrapped into one. The, the, the dates here are coinciding close enough that you can't just address the, the continuing resolution you know, tomorrow and then a week or a week and a half later have to address the debt limit, which is in some ways a lot scarier of a of a um, of a deadline. So um, I think that the discussion they had in the White House was of this grand bargain. Where where could they see con some concessions? But ultimately, I mean, I think that that uh, President Obama is 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 resolute on his his commitment that I'm not I'm not going to negotiate on this. Uh, that he feels like um, you know the concessions that that. Republicans have, have sort of leaked out there that they have this long wish list of, of, of things that they want. Um, and, you know, it, it's, 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 it's quite a wish list. And I don't think that um, Democrats are, are so inclined to say, yeah, we're going to let, let you have that because they feel like at the end of the day, Republicans are going to have to come to their position anyway. So why should they negotiate is, is, is sort of their, their position here. Um, so once again, we're at that impasse where the two sides are talking past each other, um, and it doesn't seem to be a clear way forward. The only thing we do know is that there really needs to be a, a, a resolution because the failing to act on the debt limit and continuing this um, government shutdown will have disastrous consequences.
There are more than 9,000 comments on our Facebook page. You can join in on the conversation, facebook.com slash C-SPAN. Let me share with you two from Scott Graves, who says, to your point, Matt Fuller, Speaker Boehner said that he will not allow it to default, so that means the government shutdown won't last more than a couple of weeks. And David Evans says, I want to see a budget compromise. I want to see a budget deal that reduces the deficit and ultimately pays down the debt. I want to see a clean CR so that the real work can begin. The GOP is just wasting time. Matt Fuller, your thoughts? Well, to Mr. Graves' point, I think that's exactly what the Democrats feel. I, th I think they think um, that ultimately Boehner is going to cave on this and, and he, he would do it without any concessions. And, and conversely, Republicans are trying to, to show uh, Democrats and they're trying to show the American people that they're serious about this, that, that and the government shutdown in some ways is, is a warm up to the debt limit fight. And, and I think that. Republicans, one thing you can say about them going over uh, and, and we have a, a shutdown, not finding a, a solution on, on the CR, which it seems to be that the solution that everyone says the way to out of this is to pass a clean CR, even if it's a short-term clean, clean CR for a week or two. Uh, but it shows that Republicans are serious, that they want um, concessions from Democrats. And, you know, Boehner's had a, hit the so-called Boehner rule for um, over two years now, and where he says he needs dollar uh, Every dollar you raise the debt ceiling, you have a dollar in cuts or reforms. Um, he already seems to be moving on that a little bit here, I would say, where the debt limit plan that we, we, we sort of saw was one where it would be um, motions to instruct tax reform. So you'd be counting, um, you know, the, the effect of, of tax reform. Um, you basically, you're calling for tax reform and saying that you've saved the money on that. Um, now it's you know it's unclear what the final product w would be on a debt limit plan, but certainly uh, Democrats are not open to if you say this is raising the debt limit by a trillion dollars for one more year of, of borrowing authority. They're certainly not open to uh, raising um, finding spending cuts or or, or quote reforms um, for a trillion dollars. So once again, they're far apart right now. So it, it is a very scary uh, um, deadline and. It's one that Republicans, yes, they, they absolutely feel that they can't go over on it, but, but their, their Democrats and Republicans are far apart at this point. Matt Fuller, we may have to go back to the floor in just a moment. I want to thank you for joining us uh, from Capitol Hill. But if we have a moment, I want to share this uh, picture that we talked about yesterday, Senator Joe Manchin. This is from a tweet from one of our viewers who said, Joe Manchin answering his own office phone. How typical is this scene on Capitol Hill? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I have heard of some Capitol Hill offices who um, right now have gone to a answering machine. I, I know that that story with um, Joe, <laughs> Joe Manchin was, I think he said, you know, a caller called up and, and wanted to talk about Obamacare, and he, he was like, uh, you know, oh, let me have it, uh, pal, <laughs> or, or, you know, something to that effect. Um, and I think so. in some ways, um, you know, staffers, obviously, it's, it's supposed to be essential personnel at this point, and, and staff assistants uh, in some offices. Some offices are, are, are keeping the phones open and having staff assistants, and, and other people, communications directors, uh, um, you know, higher up chiefs of staff some, in some cases are, are answering the phones, but a lot of other um, offices are, are just saying, you know, we have, we have a shutdown, we, we can't handle the uh, calls at this point. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit in disarray on Capitol Hill with, with those sorts of things. So very quickly, what can we expect over the next couple of hours from the House? Well, the House is going to pass uh, you know, th this bill. Um, they have another bill on, on the docket, I believe, the, uh, for the National Institutes of Health. Um, obviously, it's been a politicized event about um, you know, kids with cancer being turned away. And, and obviously, Harry Reid um, had a statement that he's definitely walked back from, um, made it clear that you know, they are absolutely concerned with, with kids with cancer and, 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 and the government turning these things away. But um, you know, Republicans are looking to highlight the, the the problems of a shutdown by saying we can we can solve these one by one, and Democrats won't agree to um, you know, coming to the table and, and solving the issues that we agree on already. Um, so it, politically, it's a it's a it's an issue that I think Republicans are winning on, in the sense that piece by piece they can say, well, we funded that, we you know we wanted to open the national parks, and Democrats said no. Um, and and once again, Democrats feel like the respon the only responsible way to to, to govern here is to governed by opening the entire government uh, and not just the, the pieces that are, are quite visible in the shutdown that are, are really popular with Americans. Um, so, it, you know, we're going to see more of that. We're going to see more of the mini CRs coming, through, coming to the floor. It seems as if um, Republicans think this is a good negotiating principle for them, a good way forward to uh, show the American people that they're hard at work, even though the negotiations are, are sort of stalling at this point. 
um, you know, we'll be here probably for the weekend, and, and you might not find anything um, that looks like a real resolution. But Matt, Matt Fuller, I'm going to stop you there. Thanks very much for being with us. We'll take you now back to the floor of the House of Representatives. Stopped. And the question is on passage of the bill. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed will say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. For what purpose does the gentleman from Virginia seek recognition? Madam Speaker, we request the yeas and nays on this. The yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will rise. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This is a five-minute vote. And so while we watch that vote, we again want to thank Matt Fuller, who joined us just a short while ago to add his expertise to what's happening here in Washington on day three of the government shutdown. We're collecting your thoughts on our Facebook page. You can join in on the conversation, facebook.com slash C-SPAN, and our hashtag on, our, on Twitter is C-SPAN chat. There's this from JP. All of a sudden, we have a new phrase in the English language, clean CR, to hell with it, vote dirty. Lauren is joining us from Stockton, Kansas, Independent Line. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Uh, I've been watching this ever since it started, and it's been really uh, upsetting and really um, eye-opening. It's, it's sad that a Tea Party branch of the Republicans could hold the, the nation hostage and hold uh, their fellow Republicans hostage and it's to me it's un American and it's verging on the verge of treason. Okay. Because they shouldn't be treating each other this way. Thanks for the call. At one point the stock market, by the way, was down more than hundred and seventy points. It's now down just past ninety points. The president talking about the impact that all of this has on the markets in an interview that he conducted yesterday with John Harwood of CNBC. William is joining us from Emory, Texas, Republican line. Good afternoon. Hello. Uh, last week I attended a meeting in Dallas that was hosted by the Dallas Federal Reserve Bank and the vice president there, uh, I asked her a question, did they uh, calculate the effects of people for the first time buying health care and the rise in health care premiums, what effect that would have on GDP forecasts for next year? And to my surprise, she said, no, we're concerned about it, but we did not forecast in the effects of the health care into the 2.2% GDP forecast for next year. So I think our government's given this rosy picture of how things are going to look, but they're not even making a forecast of the impact of the ACA on the economy. That's my only comment. Thank you. Okay, William, thanks for the call. Another viewer saying, Press Secretary Jay Carney lying again now about Social Security payments, trying to scare the elderly. If you log on to cspan.org, you'll be able to watch the briefing with Press Secretary Jay Carney and all of our events. You can check it out anytime, again, at cspan.org. Next call is Ari joining us from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, Republican line. Good afternoon. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Uh, quick question. When uh, Obamacare was first proposed, uh, the explanations that I heard was that if you were satisfied with your present health care uh, program, that you didn't have to get involved with Obamacare. And now I'm hearing that... Uh, People who are satisfied with their health care plans are being forced into taking, uh, you know, Obamacare. And uh, they say something about the federal employees not being involved in doing that. Well, federal employees who are covered by the federal program, if they don't like that program, they have an option to opt out of it. Now, now, what is right and what is wrong? I, I, I don't know. Do people who are satisfied with their current program, do they have to get involved with Obamacare? Okay. Thank you for your thoughts and comments on our Twitter page. Again, the hashtag C-SPAN chat. Why did the Republicans choose NIH today? Why not yesterday? Better yet, 
What about WIC, the Women and Children's uh, Program? Next is Mike from Oklahoma. Welcome to the conversation. Go ahead, please. Mike, you're on the air. We'll try one more time. For Mike from Oklahoma. How about Donald, Donald in Clarksville, Virginia, Independent Line? Yes, how you doing? Um, I just want to make a, a quick comment. Sure. You know, the Republican Party, as far as I'm concerned, these people are doing the worst thing to this country that so-called Americans has ever done. And if John Boehner, he is not a leader. Uh, he is allowing the Tea Party and people like Rush Limbaugh to treat him like a puppet instead of him standing up as a man. Donald, thanks for the call. Again, a reminder, you can weigh in on our Facebook page, and we're asking the question, who is responsible for the current fiscal stalemate in Washington? Democrats, Republicans, or the White House? It is a non-scientific survey. But many of you are already weighing in, and well over 9,000 people with their Facebook comments. We're going to watch the last few votes from the floor of the House of Representatives. We'll be back later this afternoon with more as day three of this government shutdown continues and the impact here in Washington and around the country. On this vote, the yeas are 265 and the nays are 160. The bill is passed and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table.
The House will be in order. Members take their conversations off the floor. The House will be in order. If members could take their conversations off the floor. When I do start, try to get one, one more time coming clearly. Regular order. First, please take your conversations off the floor. Does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? Madam Speaker, pursuant to House Resolution 370, I call up the